can we empower Black culture using the history of plant-based eating? Welcome back and thank you for tuning in to Nadja Speaks. I'm Nadja Wright Brown, contributing for Jane and Chain News, co-owner of the Land of Kush Vegan Soul Bistro in Baltimore and executive director of the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. Our guest today, Amira Mercer, a culture writer and editor whose storytelling dives into the beauty and death of Black America, is going to tell us how we can empower ourselves. Hey, how are we doing today, Amira? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Nigel. Glad to have you back. Glad to have you back. Last time we were together on a panel connecting the dots and now I have you all to myself. So <laughs> let's start by uh, you telling us a little bit about yourself, Amira, and how you transitioned to vegan four years ago. Sure. Well, I'm a writer and editor. Um, I founded a platform called Other Sun, which is a womb wellness and healing guide for black women. And it basically just, if you read between the lines, it kind of follows my healing journey. I started out about four years ago, um, transitioning to a plant-based diet. And I just like, I just could sense that something wasn't right. You know, I had like anxiety. I was dealing with depression, even though at the time I didn't realize it was depression. I just wasn't happy. And I was constantly looking for natural solutions. I was always something who, someone who just wanted to do things naturally. Like I would never really take medicine or Advil. If I had a headache, I would just kind of ride it out. So um, that holistic, journey, you were holistic. Yeah. Holistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that journey just kind of led me to learning about people like Dr. Sabi and just slowly and um, Michael Pollan who has this book called Food Rules. And he really helped put in perspective for me that I was eating way too much meat. Um, I was like, there's no reason for me to eat meat in three meals a day. It's just unnecessary. So I started just by um, basically having like a meal a day without meat. And then that tra I transitioned to a couple days a week without eating meat. Um, but then the real like major transition came about two years into my journey when I did a 30 day juice cleanse. And that just kind of shifted me completely to the point where I became really in touch with my body. I was able to um, understand what my body functioned best on. And then I started to understand how my mental and my spiritual was all connected to what I ate because the way that I felt on that 30 day juice cleanse was unlike any anything I had ever felt before. Um, it was probably like the, the most peaceful as an adult I had ever been. Um, and that just put me on a path to connecting the idea that the things that we eat have effect on our mental health and on our spiritual connection. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I've never taken a, uh, a cleanse yet, so I'm, it's, it's on my bucket list. Because <laughs> I hear people talk all the time about how they, you know, did the three day, seven day, you know, whatever the number of days cleanse and how wonderful they feel afterwards. So I said, you know, I really have to try this. Um, in your article in Eater titled A Homecoming, um, you stated as a black woman in America, uh, my veganism in fact, a, is in fact a homecoming. Can you tell us uh, what you meant by that? Yeah, well, I mean, our ancestors, as Black people in America, we have this, and I'm going to say this is a misperception that all of our ancestors came from Africa on boats. Black people <laughs> right. <laughs> are indigenous people. Our, some, a majority of our ancestors have been here on American soil long before people came over here to colonize. And but that's not what they teach us in school, right? No, that's not what they teach. They don't teach us a lot of stuff in school. There's a lot of learning that I did as an adult that I didn't do in school. But um, when you understanding that and understanding that if you look at the diets of most indigenous people, and I talk about this in my article, even look at the, diet, the diets of most indigenous people in Africa, if you want to go that route, um, it's a mostly plant-based diet. You're working, indigenous people work with the earth. They get their food from the earth. So things that are grown from the ground, things that are grown from the trees. So when I said that, it was me kind of acknowledging that 
um, you know, to, to be a black woman in this society already makes you stand out like a sore thumb. And anything that you do as a black person, it goes against the grain of mainstream until mainstream decides to adopt it, right? Um, and, right. you know, veganism already has this stigma of still in 2021 of being like for this, like for kooky people or like kooky spiritual people. So it's kind of just me being like, okay, I'm gonna embrace, um, I'm gonna embrace being fully black, which means connecting with my ancestors. No, even if it makes me look like this kooky girl, like this is what my ancestors were eating before people came over here to colonize us. And this is how I'm gonna continue to eat moving forward so that you know I have the best chances of survival. In your article, you also describe some of the things that you you did, um, you know, with your grandmother who was the cook. I'm not going to describe it on, on the show, you know, for uh, uh, discretion purposes because you talk about the the meat products that were being cooked and consumed. But um, would you agree that food is social and that African American culture or many cultures for for that matter that um, the, the challenge with going plant-based or practicing veganism is in itself losing a feel, feeling of culture, just, just like you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people can relate, but like a lot of my family things revolve around food. Um, a lot of black cultural events revolve around food. And then a lot of, um, American holidays revolve around food, Thanksgiving, Christmas, 4th of July, Memorial Day cookouts, you know, even St. Patrick's Day revolves around like drinking beer and eating, um, you know, cabbage and stuff like that. So um, I, I saw that once I kind of transitioned to a plant-based diet, I, I naturally just kind of started detaching from those cultural traditions. And at first it felt like I was losing something, but I realized now I'm in a point where I can make my own cultural traditions and everything doesn't have to revolve around food. Like food should really be um, fuel. Like there's way other, more other things to talk about than just food. Like, right. I appreciate like, the shout out vegans of LA. They're loving this topic. Uh, <laughs> and again, the, 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 the topic today, and I've shared the Eater article for anyone who hasn't read it. It is how to empower black culture using the history of plant-based eating because it is our culture. And I speak about this all the time when I talk about Tracy McCorder's uh, first ever published African-American vegan starter guide. So it's for us, by us, and she is <laughs> the goat. She's been doing this for decades and you know, this is not, not new to us. So I'm th thank you for writing that article. And it also, you know, reminds me of um, the book, uh, uh, Sister Vegan as well, because it's talked about um, um, in there with all of the, the essays. So shout out to um, the, the book, Sister Vegan and, um, uh, Dr. A. Breeze Harper. The next uh, question I will ask is what are some of the challenges that you think uh, cultures face, specifically African-Americans with adopting the practice of veganism? Now, the way I became vegan was basically I went and uh, got a physical and my cholesterol was, was high. I didn't know anything about all these terms, vegan, vegetarian, and all the terms that, that were out there. I just knew I had to do something about my cholesterol. Now, I loved animals. I love, as a matter of fact, as I say, I love animals. Um, my cat Vanilli comes in and makes her <laughs> debut as she always does when, when I'm filming live. Um, but I've always loved animals. I've always had a love of animals, cats, dogs, you know, I've had rats and mice and you know, <laughs> all of those things. But when you're looking at food, because of the culture, you're not um, associating uh, the chickens and the pigs and the cows, you know, as animals. And this is this is what we're brought up with. So is that some of the challenge? Oh, what other challenges are there? Yeah, I mean, I, that's definitely a challenge. There's a severe disconnect between what we're eating and yeah, between what we're what we're actually eating. Like 
for example, I was over at a friend's house and she, we were talking about the Netflix documentary Sea Spiracy and she was yeah. like, she was like, oh my gosh, like I was so sad watching that. And then she was literally eating fried fish. But what, but what is like, what is that, that you just watched? Because Cal, um, Cowspiracy got me <laughs> from an environmental uh, standpoint. So watching yeah. that documentary gave me a greater understanding. So you watch these documentaries and you see this and some people, you know, will, will go vegan, you know, right after the documentary. And some people right. like, oh, you know, I'm going to continue to, to do what I've been doing. I mean, I, I, I really think it comes down to um, convenience, like, it's very easy to what well, I call it the Babylon diet, but you can call it the standard American diet. It's very easy to continue eating the Babylon diet because you can go right down the street to Wendy's if you don't feel like cooking. Like the way that I eat, I have to be intimate with my food. I have to prepare it every day. I prepare my food every day. So I think there's a convenience aspect that people are afraid of. They feel like it's too hard. But um, the, the benefits that you get from taking control of your body and taking control of what you put in your mouth far outweighs any extra work that you'll have to do. And I also think people are scared of it just from a like a taste perception. Like, you know, black people, we like seasoning. We like our food to taste good. We think having the itis after our food is a good thing. When it's not, that means your body cannot process fully what you just ate and it needs and it's telling you to go lay down somewhere like that's actually not a good thing but you know black people will be like you know if it didn't make me fall asleep afterwards then it wasn't good um so we have to change our perception of what food actually is like yeah the the stuff that you're eating is actually dead animals that were slaughtered somewhere food is actually fruits and vegetables that grow from the ground and you can make them taste good you can season them and have all the flavor in the world um, my partner and I, we sell vegan plant-based cuisine and people are always amazed. Like we do like Chipotle squash burgers and- Oh, wow. And alkaline vegan uh, lasagna, zucchini lasagna. And people are always amazed when it tastes like food. And it's like, yeah, cause it is food. This is the real food. Well, my husband always says uh, the sauce is the boss and it's all about the seasonings and you're seasoning the food with plants yeah. anyway. You know, this is, you know, whether it's fresh plants, dried plants, herbs, spices, you're seasoning, seasoning it with plants. I also feel it's um, going back to the social aspect of it. Uh, people don't want to feel um, uh, left out, ostracized. Um, it's yeah. like, OK, you would a bunch of friends. One day you're all going to out out back or whatever you know, those those uh, food houses are where they slaughter animals to get the food on the table. And then next thing you're like, I'm vegan. And everybody was like, OK, you know, <laughs> you're out. You know, people don't want to really go through that. So it's really about I feel knowing yourself and being strong in your space and being able to I can have friends, all type of friends. My friends don't have to be vegan. There's some people whose friends all have to be vegan because they want to make sure that um, the, the, the conversation and the mindset is all in alignment. Uh, you know, people don't like debates, but I can deal with anyone because I'm I am comfortable in my skin and I know who I am. And, um, you know, if you want to know about me, you know, well, I'm vegan and this is this is my lifestyle. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to beat you over the head about it, but I will educate you from time to time. And when you see that I'm living this good life and you want to know how and why, well, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, I fuel myself with, with good food and right. whole food, uh, whole food, plant based uh, items, which, like he said, fruits, nuts, vegetables, legumes, uh, beans, like this is food. So I hate when people ask, well, what do you eat? Well, right. What do you think? What are what all of those things? You know, right. well, what do you eat? I got more options than you do. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, like, I feel like people need to kind of grow up and like everything doesn't have to be centered around food. So you do have people are afraid because they don't want to be left out. They might feel peer pressured, but it's like, if we actually change our community gatherings to not center around food, we could actually get work done. Like what's the land that we're about to buy so that we can, you know, or like 
let's helps with your thinking. Kids. Yeah, let's yes. get our kids together and do something active. Or like, like there's so many other things we can do besides sit around and eat ribs. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, a lot of times it can be, um, you know, the the situations that uh, our folks are going through, the traumas. And again, it's, it's all social, you know, uh, I'm not gonna use the term, I don't wanna use the term misery loves company, but you know, if we all eat together, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be together and then we can have, have that conversation. Um, it's definitely, um, there's a lot of work that we need to do because I talk to a lot of people and you know when I get the pushback of well don't tell me anything about my genes I don't keep eating it or, you know whatever it, it's it's a problem for them it's a problem for folks to hear that when you're consuming this type of food it is not only is it detrimental to your health but you know the process that it takes to get this food to you is a violent process so it's not really food it's violence i mean and that's that's what you you know when you educate yourself you find out it is it's a violent process uh these animals are going through a lot of stress for um the food to get to you and you, you just don't care about that and, and it just amazes me and then the health aspect especially with African-Americans. I mean, you can go to a number of funerals and a lot of times uh, folks are, are dying because of diet, whether it's heart attacks, sh you know, stroke, um, uh, cancer. And, and it's sad because you're either gonna pay now or you're gonna pay later. So I, I, I don't know. Um, you, you also mentioned that plant-based eating went against what your mother had been taught about nutrition as a nurse. Um, where is the dis disconnect between, or where do you think the disconnect is between the medical field and learning more about nutrition and the understanding that food is a natural medicine and why aren't we using it <laughs> as mm -hmm. such? So yeah, I have a few medical professionals in my family. And then also just from my experience of interacting with doctors, um, Nutrition actually is never brought up in the conversation at all. Like if you go to a doctor and you're dealing with something, they'll be like, oh, they, they never ask you what you're eating. And when they send you off, they either send you off with a prescription, they send you off with a date for surgery, or they send you off and say, come back in three months and we'll see, we'll see how it's going. But they don't say, what did you eat? What are you eating? What was even your mental state right now? Like there are so many things that connect that are connected to how our body manifests illness. Um, and yeah, like my mom, she has been taught like many nurses and medical professionals that um, protein is a made, is, is, is a key component of the diet. And the only way you can get protein is through animal protein. But the animal, most of the animals that we eat, like cows, for example, they produce protein because they're eating grass or herbs and vegetables. So we can do the same, our bodies can do the same thing. Our bodies are very intelligent. They don't need secondhand protein from an animal. Um, so yeah, the medical industry, it's, I mean, if you go to any doctor, they're not, most of them are not gonna ask you what you're eating and they don't care what you're eating. They already have been taught in school. It's almost like, I see the medical industry as a trade. like. You go there, you learn certain things. The information is not updated at all. So people have learning the same things about the body for the last 50 years. And then they, they go out and, you know, they're looking to do surgeries. They're looking to prescribe medications for financial reasons for the hospital. Yeah. And then they don't care. They don't care about actually healing you. They just care about treating your conditions and they hope you come back with more conditions. Okay. So they're not going to tell you, Hey, you can actually like heal yourself by just eating right. Yeah, because the money isn't in the cure, it's in the medicine, you know, in God we trust the almighty dollar and, and, and that's just the reality of it. And it's sad right. because I have a strong belief in um, holistic specialists who I, I see and they always look at the overall, um, uh, how are you feeling? What are you eating? How much stress? You know, they look at all of that before uh, any recommendations are made. And then, you know, I counteract that with 
uh, doctors when I go see doctors and then there's always a discrepancy. I'm like, you know, this is just totally wrong and we need to do something about this. It's sad. We need to embrace uh, the holistic um, specialist field because uh, they, they're, they're doing the right thing. Okay. Um, there's too many people dying and we're in a pandemic. We're in a pandemic right now uh, promoting uh, more medicines and, and, and vaccinations and people have the, the right to, to, to decide what they want to do. Um, but it still falls back on you need to eat healthy and you need to boost your immune system. Um, so it all goes back to the diet. Um, let's talk about spirituality. And when I met you for the first time during the Connect the Dots um, panel discussion that we're on, and any, if anyone missed that discussion, it is on NodjaSpeaks.com. Uh, ticker running. Let me run, run the ticker so everyone can see that. So you can go to NodjaSpeaks.com to uh, catch that discussion, Connect connect the Dots, that was co-hosted by uh, Nivi, Nivi of um, the Divinity Coalition. Um, what role does spirituality play in empowering black culture to eat plant-based? Because I feel spirituality, it teaches you to be uh, really closely connected with yourself. So I'm into the chakras, I'm into the incense, I'm into the candles, I'm into aromatherapy, all of that. So talk a lot about, a little about the spirituality yeah. aspect. <laughs> I mean, I think if you understand that we are all one, and I know that sounds really cliche, but you know, everything that exists on this planet is a manifestation of God. And if you understand that you are a manifestation of God, that your body was given to you by the creator and that it's a reflection of the creator, then you're gonna wanna treat it and, and you only get one body to experience this lifetime, you're gonna wanna treat it as compassionately as possible, which means putting the right fuel inside of it so that you can exist on earth to do your whatever your soul's purpose or your soul's mission is. Most everyone came here with a mission, big or small, it doesn't have to be some big, some big mission, but everyone came here to do something. A lot of us came here just to heal ourselves. And I feel like if you have not connected with the idea that, or you ha if you have not connected with the desire to heal yourself, then you're missing a big aspect of the human experience. You know, we all have trauma and things that we have to work through and, um, our physical experience directly affects our mental experience, which directly affects our spiritual experience. So, I mean, you I feel like it was easy for me to come into plant-based eating because I am a very spiritual person. I already understood that connection, but I think everyone needs to just focus on healing themselves physically first, and then they will begin to take that spiritual journey. It'll automatically start to happen. Because some people don't even know what, I, if you're not a spiritual person, you don't know what I'm talking about. It sounds like I'm just saying a whole bunch of gobbledygook. You're, you're, you're right, you're, 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 de you're, you're on point with that. Because um, spirituality, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, is, is, is a, a little different than um, re religious practice. You right, know, in my opinion, it's just two two different things. Um, spirituality uh, causes you to really connect with yourself, and when you mention something about uh, fueling your body, um, a lot of times people are fueling their cars with uh, you know premium unleaded <laughs> gasoline, but mm -hmm. not realizing that you need to fuel your body just as well to keep on going. You know, you this is this is this is the one body you're gonna have, and you really. Right it as such because you're not going to trade it in like you trade in a vehicle you made a statement in your eater article um in an ideal world our food would simply be a source of nutrition and fuel for the body not a political statement can you talk about that statement yeah i mean well like from my personal experience when i started um being a full-time plant-based eater and then like talking to people about it just to help them also transition 
I turned into Angela Davis, Malcolm X. Like, <laughs> everyone is calling me radical. Like, and to the point where I'm like, ooh, maybe I need to tone it down. But it's like, I'm just trying to help you understand that, you know, this fresh salad is better than going to a burger joint and getting a, like, it's really that simple. I'm just trying to help you understand that this, this food over here is going to help you do what you have to do for the day, for the month, for the next decades, way better than if you consistently eat this cheeseburger over here. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think I also mentioned that article, like just being black in this society is a political statement. But I, the way that I exist now is like, when I wrote that article, I was kind of in a different space. The way that I exist now is I really, I really don't care if I'm making a political statement by being who I am, because I'm always just going to be authentically me. And I really don't give into the labels that this system puts on me every second. Like I choose not to operate or define myself by this system. It really doesn't matter what anyone thinks about how I live. I know that the way that I live is the truth and I'm going to share it with people. And once they experience it, you know, then then they stop calling me Angela Davis. But until then, <laughs> it's this big, scary political thing that I'm doing when I'm really just trying to tell you, get your in together, get it together. <laughs> You, you you make a great point. I want to uh, show folks the, this is a beautiful picture. It's a very, I mean, um, it just, it, it, when I look at this picture, it just, I, I feel everything, the spirituality, I feel, you know, the colorfulness, um, the the nutrient-based foods, all of that, beautiful. Did you make that picture? Did someone make that for you? No, um, this designer did i'm trying to look up her name because i follow her on it's a beautiful picture folks yeah, um we're talking about how to empower black culture using the history of plant-based eating um in this article again uh, i posted it in the link i'm going to scroll through it here because uh amira makes a statement that we get to express well actually she states in there that food writer michael pollan who you mentioned um earlier said to Oprah, we get to express our values through food. Can you expound on that? We get to, because I always say every time you pick up a fork, a knife, a spoon, or a straw, you are making a powerful decision that is going to impact your health, the environment, um, the animals, and also global hunger. Oh, here it is, right here, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're going to make a powerful decision. So can you expound on that? That I'm going to highlight that. That's where where you said it right there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if yeah, if you go back to what you said about how like um, a lot of the animals that people eat, whether it's a burger patty or the chicken that you go get from the grocery store, um, those animals died in a really violent way. They died in a really um, frightened way a lot of those fear hormone hormones are still in the food. So when you eat them, you are assuming that debt. You're assuming that fear, you're, you're, you're taking on the violent nature of how those animals die. And people don't realize how spiritual the world that we live in is. It's not just, we're not just here on a physical plane. The things that we do have consequences. So if you decide to eat food that had a violent pathway to your plate, you're going to experience violent, you're going to have violent experiences. So you're actively choosing that you're going to have low frequency experiences through the things that you eat. Whereas if you choose to go away where you're eating foods that were literally given to us by the creator, you don't have to do anything, but make sure that these foods are getting water, proper sunlight, attention, love and care. All of that process for bringing food to your plate is so filled with love and peace that when you eat it, you're choosing love, peace, happiness, joy, wealth, abundance. It's very simple. And then the experiences that you have are experiences of love, peace, health, joy, wealth, abundance. So you have a decision to make every time you eat, you sit down and eat. Are you choosing love, peace, health, 
Are you choosing fear, insecurity, jealousy, violence, aggression, depression? I love it. I love it. This is a beautiful picture. I mean, this 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 plant based this table of plant based foods is changing um, through what we see as black culture uh, is incredible. Um, so, is plant based diet <laughs> the way for African Americans, and how can we best pivot? How do you think, Amira? How can we pivot? Um, what do we need to keep doing, or what do we need to start doing? Well, I'm going to say it's the way just by tar zero in on one um, group within all of Black people is looking at Black women. And the reason that I started Other Sons is to focus specifically on womb wellness. Shout out to Queen Afua. Like, she helped me understand. Yes. Yeah, I got my book right here, too. You're going you to bring it up, too? Oh, I got this one. Oh Thank yeah, you. I have that one too. I got Heal thyself. That. It starts with healing thyself for health and longevity, and also sacred women as well. And yeah. um, we have that site. I'm going to bring your your other site up too. Okay. Um, once we get to that. Yeah. So Queen of Four, she's the goat. And when I read her book, like she really helped me understand that like the state of my womb is connected to my entire physical self. It's also connected to how I think. It's also connected to my relationship with the creator. I say that to say, like, when you look at the state of Black women's reproductive issues today, it's clear that what we're doing collectively, what we're eating, is not right for us. So many Black women have fibroids. They have abnormal pap smears. They have PCOS. They have endometriosis. They have cervical cancer, ovarian cancer fertility issues, um, they have violent births where they're, where they're nearly dying from get, bringing life into here. And it's, it's like almost making me emotional because it doesn't have to be that way. Um, we have someone yeah. saying, Laura Parker saying, girl, have you ever been out in that garden hoeing on a hot summer day? Did you go <laughs> up canning and freezing everything your family ate during the winter? I did. Tell us about it, Laura. That, 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 that. No, I didn't, but you know, my um, my father-in-law did and um, I see, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's what we have to get back to. Like you're supposed, if you look at animals in nature, every animal works for their food, whether it's the hawk that's circling the sky, that's looking for the mouse to eat or the, the rabbit that's scourging and looking for berries. Like we're the only ones who think that you're supposed to pull up to McDonald's and just get food handed to you through a window. No, you have to put in work, girl, Laura. So there you go. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just like anything else. You have to work you if you to want to reap work. the benefits of it. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for that that comment, Laura. This is a yeah. beautiful picture. I love the art in this article. Yeah, you got to check up that check out that Eater article. So look at this. Look at this. I, I'm just going through these pictures while we talk. Yeah, she did a great job. She did a great job of bringing to life what I was talking about. But yeah, but just going back to like, if you look at the state of black women, their reproductive issues, it's clear that we're not eating the right things. All of those issues can be addressed by eating a whole foods plant-based diet. And I know this because I've healed myself of certain things. My partner, he, he has he helped heal other women of certain things because he's an herbalist. So, um, and the, so the way that we pivot, I mean, People have to stop wanting to be a part of this society so bad. Like, if you can't go to Outback and you can't go to Roots, Roof Chris, it's okay. Like, we can make our own customs. We can make our own traditions. Like, support my Black-owned business. Support your Black-owned business in terms of the food. Like, the pivot has to, it has to be a mental pivot, honestly, because a lot of people have excuses. Like, Food, oh, just eating food is not going to heal. Well, that tells me that you've never actually tried because once you actually do, once you start doing a juice cleanse and you experience what it feels and your body starts detoxing from your womb, you'll start to understand the role that food plays. But um, Tina has the answer. 
It's simple. Buy vegan, eat vegan, and wear vegan. That's how we pivot and ed educate ourselves uh, on doing that. And it's one day, one step at a time if you're not going to uh, you know, do it the next day. Uh, it took me three years and um, yeah. I got it done. <laughs> yeah. it, it took me like three or four years total, but I like, it's frustrating because people don't want to heal. You have to have a desire to heal. Otherwise, you're going to reincarnate here and have the same issues that you had in this life. So it's your Beautiful. choice. I, I, I was amazed by the pictures. I'm just, uh, you know, still in awe by the beauty of the, the illustrations. What upcoming projects are you working on? I know you have another site, the Ocean Sun. So we'll take this time to, to shout out uh, some of the sponsors that are supporting Naja Speaks, the Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland. Uh, shout out to Veg Fun. Um, uh, Welfare World, Eat the Change, Women Funders and Animal Rights, uh, Nutrition Facts, uh, Mercy for Animals through the People's Fund, uh, collectively and uh, individual supporters such as yourself, please, you know, donate at bbsmd.org so we can continue bringing you this great content, um, you know, organizing online events and all that other stuff that we do. You can find out more at BBSMD. Dot org. Um, I appreciate everyone's support. What projects are you working on, Amira? And, and what's the site of the Oshun? I see uh, follow us if you want to let everybody know how to best uh, connect with you, following you at Oshun underscore uh, US. It's no, it's no, I have it under here. It's right here. Uh, yeah, it's other sons. Uh, other sons, other sons that US. Yeah. I'll put that in the comments. So um, I'm going to um, put that in there. So yeah. people can can go to that other sons dot dot US. US. And then we'll bring up that site too. Let's bring that up so we can see what that looks like and talk about other projects that you're you're working on. Um, yeah, so other sons is like the main hub where you're gonna get all of the healing content that you need. Um, I'm really focusing this year on incorporating the knowledge that I have around food and around my fasting journey, um, I on other sons, I talk to other black people in our culture who have taken those steps to heal themselves. So I recently talked to Laoda Rasul, who's a shaman. She she gave me my first Akashic Records reading. And we just talked about the divine feminine and how to clear negative space how to clear negative energy from your space. She's really knowledgeable on just like moving bad frequencies from your home. I recently talked to Ke Chef Kepra who owns- I um, love Kepra. Yeah, Kepra's Raw Food Juice Bar in DC. We talked yes. about fasting. So if you need in any information about doing an extended juice cleanse, our whole interview on Other Suns is about fasting and aligning with your moon cycle if you're a woman and aligning with the seasons and when's the best time to fast and why you should fast and take a food vacation. Um, coming up, I will be putting out a cookbook, cookbook that has um, a whole bunch of alkaline, plant-based, vegan recipes so that there is no excuse. Hopefully that'll help people pivot. So they, they won't have an excuse. <laughs> Um, yeah, and other sons also, I saw a, a womb wellness kit, which is really popular, which includes um, Sacred Woman, and it includes a 30-day herbal detox and some crystals. Everything other sons is really a reflection of things that have helped me along my journey. So everything that you see on there are things that I really believe, things that I really use. Um, also coming up, I have a movement series where I'm talking to different um, women of color about how movement helps you to heal your womb. So I talked to my friend who practices yoga. I'm going to be talking to um, someone who does like sexy, sensual dance and touch. Um, so that'll be really fun. And then I'll have a book coming up soon just about like self-care for Black women. Um, but until then, you can go to othersons.us or you can go to Instagram. It's other underscore sons and just stay plugged in there. And I promise you'll you'll start to heal. If you don't if you go to other sons and you're not able to start your healing journey, then let me know, because I'll put whatever you need to, to help you on that site. 
Well, Mira, I see a lot of things on this site that I have to get with because I got to connect about the detox. Number one, I got to replace yes. my waist beads because my waist beads just pop, you know, so I got to yeah. get that replaced. <laughs> I get my waist beads because I'm really, I'm, I'm consistent about wearing the waist beads, so I got to get that done. So I appreciate that. I see that all on the site. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I'm about the chakras. You got a chakra set uh, for beginners. Let me tell you something. The chakras really helped me uh, dealing yeah. with this pandemic. So I can tell you, I can speak to it. I love the chakras. So this is yeah. great. I, I love it. I love you. Any last words before um, we have to leave the show? Because, you know, I gave uh, a lot of time. <laughs> and we we got to, you know, uh, end the show uh, in a minute or so. So I wanted to get anything, any strong message that you wanted to send to the viewers. Uh, again, I appreciate everyone tuning in. And if uh, you know you have friends that need this information, it will be on replay on uh, Facebook at Nadja Speaks. Or uh, if they're not into Facebook, you can go to YouTube, NadjaSpeaks.com. So please subscribe, like, comment at NadjaSpeaks.com. Support Amira um, on the website at um, the other sons.us and follow Amira at other underscore sons on IG. So take it away, Mira. My last words are to address like all of the, the black trauma that we're experiencing collectively right now. Like every day you wake up and someone else has been killed at the hands of the police. And I see a lot of people really affected by it and going into these emotional loops that they can't pull out of. And then they don't focus on their own healing. They don't focus on their children's healing. So my advice is to please, please wake up. Please, please turn up on yourselves. You have to understand that when you heal yourself, you heal your community. I, the only way that I'm here talking to Nyjah is because I took the steps to heal myself. If this were five years ago, I would have been so, I was so repressed. I was so shy. I was so insecure. I would not have been able to get on this camera and talk to you. I'm telling you the truth. It's only because I healed myself that now I can actually share information with my community that can help heal, heal others. So I know there's a lot going on in the world, but you, the only per the main star of your movie is you. You have to be grounded in yourself in order to make change. Six soldiers can't go out and do anything to fight the war. If you're sick, you have to be healthy. You have to start from a grounded place in order to go out and fight for others. So just everyone get out of your trauma loops, get out of your emotional loops, focus, get in go out in nature, ground, do a detox. Please everyone do a detox. I promise it'll change the, vib the vibration of this whole world, please. Yes, Tom, Black Lives Matter. We appreciate the love that you're giving us by tuning in. Thank you, Paige. Yes, we are trying to deliver powerful messages through Naja Speaks by bringing on powerful guests. Absolutely. Um, and yes, Tina, amen, amen, amen. So this is how you start, folks. If you're not on the journey yet, there's tons of... Um, uh, documentaries out there. There's uh, information out there. Make sure uh, you get a chance to check out Cowspiracy, What the Health, Seaspiracy is out. Um, uh, get your books. Go to bvsmd.org for materials. And again, check out Naja Speaks at najaspeaks.com. Thanks again for tuning in. Be blessed, be well, be safe. Until I see you again, peace out. Peace. Thank you, Amira. Thank you, Nigel. All right.